here with Dominic Piotet, who's um, the CEO of Unit City. And I think we'll we'll have enough time to do the the planned program with you, Dominic. Um, so I, I just wanted to give a bit of background. So Unit City, it, it might be described as the first Ukrainian innovation park. And I think you, you're also an investor. You're a sil serial Silicon Valley entrepreneur. You have more than 20 years in uh, guiding digital transformations for Fortune 500 companies. And you're a speaker, you're an author, done a lot of things. So I'm quite excited to get started. I'm, gonna, I'm sharing my screen here, so you're going to have to tell me when to switch slides. But uh, the floor is yours. Excellent. Well, thank you, guys. You know, it's the beauty of technology. Uh, usually it doesn't work. Um, but... We will make it work. Uh, I'm super happy to be with you. Uh, yes, uh, as you mentioned, Sebastian, uh, I've been in tech uh, well globally my, my entire life, um, and uh, and I'm very passionate about it. I moved from Silicon Valley to Ukraine um, actually 18 months ago uh, to run Unit City, which is a, an absolutely fascinating project. Um, we're we're really creating a, a, one of the largest uh, ecosystem in Europe. Um, around uh, around tech and innovation, and and so the question comes to: Could Ukraine be the next Silicon Valley? Um, and what I will try to demonstrate to you is: Not only it cannot, but it shouldn't. Um, and so I hope that you keep that in mind. Uh, that might seems to be uh, a little bit underselling uh, the, 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 the project. But in fact, what I believe it, it's going to be not um, the next Silicon Valley, but a better version of Silicon Valley. And that's kind of, uh, of my, my vision of it. If we can move to the first slide, um, I, I'm, I'm sure you guys will recognize this. Um, and, uh, and, and for those of you who don't, uh, it's actually the new Apple, uh, center, uh, the new Apple, uh, headquarter. And as you can see, Silicon Valley is really a valley. Uh, we are here in Cupertino, which is exactly the center of the valley. And you see all those little houses. Um, they don't look great. Um, actually, they're not great. They just cost a few million dollars. Um, but, but, but what's interesting is, is this building. As you can see, a very low building, a square shape, uh, a round shape, sorry, a round shape. Uh, and, 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 and in fact, a very unpractical uh, shape. Um, usually you don't, you don't really want to build building like this if you want to create an ecosystem of innovation. And that's, that's very interesting because in fact, this is probably one of the best ecosystem of innovation, but it doesn't look like it. It doesn't sound like it. It's not uh, intuitively, uh, it doesn't seem to be a great, uh, tech ecosystem. Um, you have to cross gardens to go from one spot to another, or you have to take a very long way around, uh, to go from one place to another to meet engineers. Uh, but it's because of the way ecosystem works and it's a way of innovation works. It's, it's all about bumping into each other by, by accident. It's, it's not that intuitive. It's actually counterintuitive. Um, and that's what Silicon Valley is about. And that's actually a little bit what we're trying to uh, build in Unit City. If we go to the second slide, you will understand really why um, we don't want to create Silicon Valley in, in actually anywhere in the world outside of Silicon Valley. Um, because really, Silicon Valley is a startup building machine. That's the only thing you do in Silicon Valley, which is great. But in fact, you create a very, very specific type of, of, of startup. And actually, you see it on the very far end of that pipe. Um, you see a little line called IPO. And you see only 410 companies. Those companies, you know all of them. It's Intel. It's HP. It's Oracle. It's Apple. Uh, it's Google. It's Facebook. It's those 400 who are the successful companies of Silicon Valley. All the other ones, they're losing money and, and they will disappear. Um, it's a way to create an ecosystem, a very specific ecosystem. It's a very ecosystem and it's a very deadly way of creating an ecosystem. A lot of companies are going to disappear. Actually, most companies are going to disappear to just create those few monopolies that are becoming tech giants. 
I think this is an ecosystem of the past. Um, I think we will not see that happening again. I don't think it's completely sustainable. It's only possible in Silicon Valley because of history and because of the amount of money that is available in Silicon Valley. And this is not what we're trying to duplicate. However, there's a few key components of an ecosystem, and that's the next slide. Um, and what is a, a, a model of innovation and what is a leading model of innovation? And it's really based around three things. It's based around talent, culture, and money. Very interesting because if you don't have those three components, you will not have a successful ecosystem of innovation. Um, and I will start actually with what I consider the most difficult one to build, which is culture. Next slide. So you should see actually an animation and tech world uh, that would be a video, which is not. But what you should see in this video is something a little bit psychedelic, something a little bit strange, something a little bit weird. And it's San Francisco in the 70s. Um, and that is what is very specific about the tech culture is it's rooted in the hippie movement. Uh, from the 70s in San Francisco. And that movement is based on the idea of a counter culture, on breaking things, on inventing new things. If we go to the next slide, um, that is not going to work either. You're going to recognize an image uh, of, in fact, Burning Man. And, and Burning Man is the typical example of the counter culture of Silicon Valley. Um, what I'm trying to say here is we need to create and we need to foster an environment of culture of innovation. And it's hard to do. It's complex. It requires a lot of, of components that we cannot necessarily decide. It also requires a very specific type of leaders and leadership. And if we go to the next slide, we will uh, see a few of those leaders, a few that you recognize. Those are not your typical CEOs. Um, even though they are leading the largest companies in the world today. I mean, Steve Jobs on the left, of course, he's not with us anymore. Uh, but typical Silicon Valley type of guy who would have gone to Burning Man if it was from his generation, who was barely wearing shoes, where the car with no license plate, who was definitely a rebel. Next, you see Howard Rengold, who is a philosopher of, uh, of innovation, and you see the way he dresses. Then you see, well, the guy of the fifth largest company in the world. Look at his shoes, look at the way he dresses. And then you see probably one of the most powerful guy in media today, uh, Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Founder and CEO of uh, Twitter, not your typical CEO. And so what we need to create that new culture is, is really a new leadership, a new type of CEOs. And this is how Ukraine is becoming or will become uh, really the next spa space for innovation. Next slide. So um, how do we do this? And this is the example of, of what we do uh, in, in Unit City. Uh, and this is actually the main plaza of Unit City that we are going to open in June. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, really, this is, this, is, this is a mindset. This is a notion of a mindset. And that mindset, I usually um, call him 10x or exponential growth, is we have to think big. Um, tech companies and, and, and Silicon Valley companies think global and think, think at, the, at, at, at a master level um, um, when they think about innovation. They want to have an impact, but an impact that is 10x bigger than whatever they do. The reality is, and this is my next slide, is today there's only two ecosystems really where we think at that level uh, 10x exponential. It's Silicon Valley on the left, and you see the Silicon Valley ecosystem, and China on the right. Um, and basically the question we have here in Ukraine today, and this is a question for all of us, um, is do we want to play a part in this big fight against to tech giant ecosystem. Um, and if we can go to the next slide. And I believe, and the next one, because there was an animation here. Uh, and I believe, and really moving to Ukraine, I had a dream. 
I had a dream that we could create something new that would be really Ukrainian and that would be an amazing tech, uh, tech ecosystem. Uh, and that would put Ukraine in the map of, of, of the global other tech ecosystem. Next slide. Um, the first component of, uh, of this is, well, first, we need an ecosystem. We need to have more than two companies working together. What is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is, is of course, culture, money, and talent. And I will come back to this again in a second. Um, but, but at least we need to have it. We're very lucky, and this is my next slide, uh, because in Ukraine, we have uh, a potential. Um, and we already see it. We have a potential to build unicorns. Um, I don't really like that that concept of unicorns. I think it's more a financial concept than anything else. I don't think there is any any reality be, be behind um, behind what's a unicorn. What I like about the idea of of having a unicorn is having a large enough company that it will impact the entire ecosystem. And when I think about it, I think of Skype and Estonia and the impact that Skype had on this entire system of, uh, of Estonia. So my belief is if Ukraine can become something close to Silicon Valley, we need to see more unicorns. We need to see more global, very impactful tech companies. To do that, we need a few things, and that would be my next slide. Uh, uh, we need startup. Uh, we, we, if, we, if we don't have that startup ecosystem, um, we will not grow unicorn. And actually, I'm mentioning here 100 startup, but I should of startup. Um, in Silicon Valley, we calculate that there's about four to 6,000 startup at any moment of time. Um, those four to 6,000 startups are going to give birth to about five to 10 unicorns at any moment of time. So from 4,000 to five to 10 max unicorns. So we need startup. And to have startup, we need to create a good ecosystem for those startups to grow so they feel good by doing what it is to do a startup, which is mostly fail. Um, and that's not fun to fail. Nobody likes to fail. So we need a culture that support that idea of, is it okay to fail? And maybe it is. Next slide, please. Then we need support. Uh, and, and by support, I mean anything you have to support. Of, um, of your business. It comes from, of course, education. It comes from people. It comes from um, really the capacity to grow. Um, it comes from support from the government. Uh, we don't see any good ecosystem that is not born uh, supported by government. In Silicon Valley, it's in $1 billion every year invested by the defense industry and the CIA in startup in Silicon Valley. $1 billion a year. And it's been like that from the very beginning of Silicon Valley. Siri, that we all know from uh, Apple, is actually uh, a military project that was financed uh, and uh, supported by the Stanford Research Institute, SRI, that became later Siri. Um, and so we see military money leading to Siri. Next slide. Um, and of course, we need international connection. We need to be global. Uh, we need to be connected to the rest of the world because, uh, because today those ecosystems never exist alone. Um, we have an amazing example, which is Israel, uh, which is, which is probably the second best ecosystem after Silicon Valley. And Silicon Valley and, and in Israel is a great ecosystem just because it's connected. That will leave a few last slide. Next slide, please. Uh, this is something I strongly believe. We can have a great vision, but if we don't have execution, then this is hallucination. Uh, and this is what Thomas Edison said, and, and this is everything that drives me every day, is how do we create uh, an ecosystem that is in executing, that is transforming our vision into reality, into businesses. And to do that, you need to have a strong ecosystem. And that will be my last slide. 
Thank you very much. Very inspiring. Uh, thank you so much, Dominic. I went to a unit city myself in Kiev, and I think it's a super cool place. I listened to a marketing seminar there, uh, and it was very inspiring. Nice. Yeah, a few years ago though, so I'm sure it's changed since then. Since then, um, we we haven't received any questions in the chat, but uh, if you can think of any right now, participants, listeners, audience, feel free to write them down there. Um, I do have one question I would like to ask you. We probably don't have mm -hmm. time for a lot because we had a bit of a delay, but um, I will ask, uh, what are your favorite Ukrainian startups right now and why? Uh, tons, tons of them, actually. I, I'm, I'm enough because I see startup every day. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely in love with a, a company called uh, that you probably have heard about because they raised uh, uh, quite a nice uh, actually from Silicon Valley investors, and Andrzej Norowitz. Um, I think Reface is exactly what you should do. Um, so I really like them. Uh, amazing mobile app. Um, I like another one uh, that is very different. It's called Bet.me. And I like Bet.me because it's been created by a woman. And I think we're starting to see more and more women in tech in Ukraine. And I think uh, I think this is something we need to highly promote and highly push and highly uh, emphasize. Uh, Bet on me. Um, it's, a, it's a startup that was uh, uh, that that helps you become a better me. Uh, go to the gym and do the, the stuff you need to do uh, to work out to become to become a better me. A huge success um, with with very little investment. Um, and so and and once again, uh, a company created by a, by a wonderful woman. Uh, so yeah, those those are two among tons that I'm looking every day that I love. Yeah, I definitely want to become a better me, so I'm going to look into that. It's, there you go. There you go. Uh, we should. We should. We all should. Right? Yeah. So, Dominic, you'll be back for the panel later. Uh, so, if you, if people have questions but you didn't ask them now, you can keep them, and we'll see if we have time to get back to it. So, thank you very much. Um, You're we're going to move on, uh, and I'm going to return in a few seconds with Artyom Petrenko, who's the managing director at Sigma Sweden Software. So. Stick around and we'll be with you again soon. Um, and then on